out and playing football was um, the only thing I always wanted to do. So right now it's not surreal. I, I already got into the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And this is not, I don't mean it like arrogant or something, but I kind of always knew that um, with the help of PPI, I would like get somewhere. I, obviously, I didn't know if it was D1 or like FPS football or something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of okay. Okay. What's up? How's it going, buddy? What's up, coach? Hey, how are you doing? You good? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. And you? We're good, man. This is, uh, apparently this is like, I don't know if it's today or not, but he's, he was in town right now and they said all the restaurants and cafes are open and people are going wild over here in, in Germany. Yeah, I know. I know people going wild. Yeah. How, how is it on your end right now? I mean, what would you do today already? Did you work out already or what? Oh, yeah. I just came from a workout. I had a workout at like 8 a.m. Okay. Um, I had my breakfast. I'm still eating a little bit, but nothing special today. Yeah. How how is that the whole situation over there right now with um? Because you're telling me they're slowly gonna start opening stuff, but what, what's the so, plan? Um, yeah, like everything is closed to be honest, except for the rehab center. So I can go there like once or twice a week. Okay. Do some rehab for my knee. Okay. But pretty limited. Like we can only use ten or fifteen percent of the machines and all that stuff. You know. Okay. Um. So yeah, it kind of sucks, but it's starting to open up again they planning they, they got a plan now to work out in small groups in like two weeks or something right so that's what i'm hoping for to like at least be able to work out with some teammates on the field everything outside everything limited but it's better than nothing you know no, i mean yeah. that's true because i mean like there's a lot of guys i mean you know all the other guys from from germany that are also playing in the states like dini i don't you don't know if you met him um but i actually Who? Uh, Demetrius, he's playing at, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. at Rhode Island. I think you yeah. know, maybe, maybe from the All Spot or something like that. Uh, maybe you guys mm -hmm. are playing each other. But I was talking to him actually to him today. Uh, he called me up and he's telling me like at least at URI they bumped back because he's supposed to arrive in a month and they pushed the whole team coming back until July fifteenth. He says something like that because they're still yeah. waiting to open things up. But I mean, they 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 planning it, but nobody knows if it's really happening. You know, okay. so. Um, it's better than nothing. We're hoping that it will work, but you know, as soon as someone is sick, they're probably shutting everything down again. You know, you never know. It's a unique situation, but yeah. um, I hope that we can at least do some stuff outside on the field because right now, most of the times, I'm working out alone or with like a homie, but he's not even a football player. Okay. So I don't, I don't really have a guy who can throw me a football or something like that. You know. So it sucks. I'm hoping for like a quarterback or like a teammate who can actually help me a little bit, you know. I mean, yeah, because because you've been there since what January, right? I came here beginning of January, yeah. So so until this until until this point, like, is everybody away from campus or what's going on? Yeah, I'm the only one on campus from the team actually. Okay. <laughs> what what, yeah. what what made you make that decision? You don't want to come back to Germany, or was it possible? No, man, I miss my family. I really miss my family. Um, I want to. I actually wanted to come back. I made the decision to stay here like a week ago. Okay. Um, and yeah, I was just like hoping because the coaches kept telling me that practice would start soon. Right. Um, and I just had to like trust and believe them. And yeah, I'm hoping for practice. And they already they also provided me with like a, a nice place to stay. You know, so mm -hmm. I got I got my new crib here. You know. And, <laughs> Yeah, I got my food, so yeah, I miss my friends, I miss my family, I miss Germany, but you know, sometimes you gotta sacrifice some some things for football, you know, so that's what I'm basically doing right now. Well, I mean, yeah. at least they got you with a decent setup, you can, you got food, you got a roof over your head, like all that stuff. Um, how, how yeah. did, are you, did you just finish up online classes for the semester? Yeah, I finished, I finished my, I had my final exams last week, my last. Okay. So I, I finished uh, my, exa uh, my exams in my semester, and now I got some free time, actually. Yeah, I don't have classes right now. Okay. So, yeah. so basically, I mean, of course, this is essentially your first semester in the state transitioning. I mean, what, what, what has it been so far now seeing you coming from, let's say, Berlin, from the youth program? I, I don't know if you played a few games or anything. I think you trained with the seniors, right, in Berlin a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, so now coming over, and now you officially, essentially, you just finished your first semester with Corona hitting. I mean, how how is yeah. that? How has at least that transition been? You know, at least being in the states, the culture a little bit. You you already got a taste of it. I mean, how's that been? Yeah. So yeah, as you said, I already got a taste from it because in the beginning, obviously, uh, we had no limited practices or anything. 
-hmm. So um, I think the tradition, uh, the transition, the transition was kind of smooth because um, I actually made some good friends here, also like outside of football. So okay. um, I always had the like chance to like zoom out a little bit and kind of refresh, you know. So I have some nice friends here, also from Tucson, from Arizona, okay. who helped me kind of like setting everything up, you know, because. You don't think about all the stuff you got to do when you change the continent. Just like basically basic stuff like a new phone contract, stuff like that. You know, uh, or setting up a bank account, all those things. Mm -hmm. I had nice friends. I had coaches. A lot of people who tried try to help me. So the mm -hmm. transition the transition was easy. Um, and like football-wise, I think the toughest part was probably the, the thing with my knee, you know. Um, um, because obviously we practice way more here than in Germany. And uh, in the beginning it was a little bit stressful for my knee, but at the same time we had a lot of rehab resources. So it wasn't that, e that tough. After two or three weeks, I kind of got into the rhythm. Okay. Um, and then it got easier week by week, yeah. What's, yeah been, so. what's been the hardest thing that you've had to get used to now being in the States? What, what would you say? Because I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know how, thing. how it's different to Berlin because, like, guys like Rory, guys like Jamal White, they they call, they say, they say Berlin's kind of like a little jungle. So I don't know how oh. it, how it how it meshes with, let's say, your transition to the states. I mean, I don't know how it is for Jamal because obviously it depends on which state you grow up because all the states are completely different, right? Like culture wise and all that. But are you asking like football wise or just in general? You tell me. Okay, so Whatever you know. I think I think football wise, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fast, I'm pretty good, so I think that was okay. But uh, a big thing I realized, well, my probably my biggest weakness is, is like football IQ. So you know, in the GFA, you just like pass the guy. You don't really care about the coverage. You don't think about those things. Mm -hmm. You know, you just run and try to catch the ball, and you don't really care about the details and the defense. So um, just like re learning basic coverages and understanding what the defense actually tries to do to stop you, that was, I think, the, big, the toughest part for me football-wise. And just like culture-wise, I think, I think the food, yeah. The food? <laughs> so yeah, the food. So the thing is, uh, before Corona, we actually had a, um, a canteen, like a place where you could grab food for the athletes. Mm -hmm. And th that's some healthy stuff. So th that stuff was good. But as soon as cor Corona hit us, I had to eat like the regular American food, you know. Okay. And that shit is tough for me, you know. <laughs> like my, my body can't deal with that. Like the fast food is killing me, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that was probably the toughest part for me. Just like eating the junk food and all that, yeah. How much kilos you get plus now after Corona? How much? Um, I, I, yeah, I didn't... Okay. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really gain weight because I always try to eat as healthy as possible. Um, and now that I got my own place, I can actually. I just went grocery shopping yesterday, um, and I bought a bunch of healthy food. It's it's really expensive here, much more expensive than Germany. But yeah, yeah I got some money, so yeah, now I can actually cook my own food because uh, when Corona hit us, I had to live in a dorm, so I had no kitchen, nothing. So I really had to eat the food on campus. Right. And they only got you know, like pizza and all that shitty stuff, you know. So yeah, yeah that was burgers, tough. Burgers, fries. Yeah, yeah. I really, I'm not a big fan. I mean, sometimes you can eat it if right. you like, go out with friends, but I can't eat it on a daily basis, you know. I really feel how how it influences the performance and all that, you know. Yeah. No, we, we, we used to say things back in college. I told you it was like it was like the freshman, the freshman fifteen or something. Because like basically, when a lot of people would move on campus and away from oh yeah, they told like, me like, yeah yeah the first fifteen like people would just gain weight the first. The first now, but you can't do this as as a football player because they no, keep no. checking our weight, you know. Right. So we we got checked at least once a week. Um, now, like in fall, I think they even do it like almost every day in the morning. So you can't just like gain 15 weights. That's like for regular students. Exactly. Yeah. That's like like the there's no students. Cool. They, they just get, they gain weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. For example, the girls are like, I need to lose 15 pounds. And you're like, what? Like, did you? Damn. Yeah, but th that's true. I thought it was like a myth, but there are actually a bunch of people who gain like 15 pounds or something the freshman year. I mean, it adds up. Yeah. Um, so like right now, you're talking about the, the system and football IQ and so I mean, how, how's the playbook there? Is it difficult? 
or it's also because um, for you, for you, they brought you in to basically do essentially you're going to play tight end, right? So um, right now I'm 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 kind of playing everything to be honest. So I play slot, I play wide out. Um, I but they still like trying to look what was like my best fit, you know. But I think just based on my body and my play style, I'm kind of hybrid, you know. So I think I'm pretty sure that I, if someone coaches me, I can basically do everything. Right. So yeah, they got me like blocking. They got me standing as a slot receiver, as a wideout. I have to like know the whole playbook because you sometimes you kind of can, you can cheat like the system and just like learn the outside routes if you just play outside, you know. Mm -hmm. But I have to like learn all the routes, all the concepts, all the plays. So um, it's it's kind of tough in the beginning because obviously you got to know much more, but I think it's good. So yeah, I, I like it. I really like it. So they got me basically playing everything. Yeah. Okay, okay. So so you're like you're like the German the German version of Gronk basically for them right now. I mean, I don't have the body like Gronk. <laughs> let's let's be you honest. You got some more weight, but yeah, yeah. But uh, like especially in my freshman year, also because of my injury, I'm not focusing on just like gaining weight because right. that's not good for your knee. You know if you just like try to bulk as fast as possible. Right. So I'm trying to like uh, get that step by step. Mm -hmm. and, and I think in my sophomore year, I will like really focus on gaining weight. But right now I'm just like trying to be uh, obviously gaining a little bit of weight, but uh, at the same time trying to like not put too much pressure on my knee with like unnecessary or like unhealthy weight, you know. Right. And yeah, so that's what I'm tr like trying to do right now. And I think right now I'm, um, probably on my on the weight I had like a year ago okay. so before I tore my ACL I'm at like 228 pounds mm -hmm. and I think that like for, for right now that's that's pretty good because yeah. it's like a healthy weight for my knee and as soon as the knee gets like a little bit stronger step by step I also gain a little bit of weight right. yeah so I already had it I actually already had it once I was eating like crazy Obviously, sometimes you, you get into the mode, you see like you're getting bigger, you get kind of mm -hmm. excited, you know. And then I realized that my knee got like exhausted pretty quick because sometimes one or two pounds can make a big difference, you know. Yeah. So I had to like cut down a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, now I, I got a healthy weight. I feel much better. Yeah. That's good, man. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. And how's about it when, when we talk about the, the offense? How much, um, how much plays you totally have to learn on how or how big is the difference to a GFL playbook or junior playbook to uh, what you're facing right now? So, I mean, I don't know. I only had my playbook in German, in Berlin. So I feel like other playbooks were much more complex compared to our playbook in Berlin. So we only had basic plays, probably like 15 plays or something in Berlin. Plays we really like to use. So... I was able to learn a playbook probably in like one or two days. But here is it's just just a different thing because even if you only have 20 or 30 plays, the plays always change based on the coverage, based on what the defense is doing, based on the team, the strength or the weakness of the team. And also a big thing which I had to learn is that like on week two, the play can be this, but on week three, it's a complete different play, you know. So you always, you can't just like learn the playbook once and then, okay, I got it for the next four seasons, you know. It's always changing. Yeah. So sometimes you kind of get messed up in the head. Also with the signals, obviously you can't like do 10 weeks straight the same. You can't use the same signals. So you always have to change some stuff right. to make it tougher for the opponent. Um, and yeah, that's what I ha had to learn in the beginning. So... Yeah, it, it's definitely tough. And I, I don't know the whole playbook yet, but I'm getting there. Um, and obviously, we got, like, daily meetings, so they go over. It's not – I didn't just come here and they were like, okay, yeah, like, learn it on your own. There are a bunch of people who are trying to help you. Right. You can basically call, like, all the time someone and they come to your place or you meet them in a facility and they go over the place as long as you want. So mm -hmm. if you really want to learn the playbook, you can learn it because there are definitely people like trying to help you. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And um, when is then the final decision? I mean, um, now you say you play kind of everything. Is there on, on your team, so one day you have like a cut day, like, okay, now you'll be tight end or slot or wide out. Or is it your position actually for you like, shit, I have to learn everything? 
so um i think like learning wise even if they tell me okay like next season you're playing slot only i'm still learning the outside stuff because it's always good to know what the guy next to you is uh, trying to do you know so if you only learn your stuff i mean you can kind of get through the practices and the games but sometimes you run into a guy and then you're like oh shit i didn't even know you wanted to cross me you know so it's always good to know what your the guy next to you is uh, trying to do and um a day where they like trying to t tell you what, what we play i don't know if there's like a day i think it just comes with the practices so to be honest if you like mess up always as a whiteout and you can't beat the like the press coverage man to man obviously they will put you inside one day and yeah. um and tell you okay like this season you might not play outside because you're not good enough yet but um i think you can even like step up if you if they tell me okay you're playing slot this season and in week four in the middle of the season they uh, they see it, like during the practices oh shit he got better like beating man to man and he can actually play outside they will put you they, they will put you outside so it's not that there's like one day they tell you okay you're outside and then you like safe for the whole season it always changes and they can always put you on the active for us and they can also like take you away so you always have to like prove yourself and improve and yeah so yeah that's what i'm like hoping that i can like challenge my teammates and prove the coaches that i'm like worth like putting me everywhere because i really want to play everywhere yeah perfect um during, during this whole springtime let's say and since january were you able to take part in normal practices and get one-on-ones or no not yet so yeah that's the thing so um I think when Corona hit us, um, like after one or two weeks, I was actually clear to practice with the team. But before that, I was most of the times doing the warm-ups with the teams, but then just doing uh, my own stuff on the sideline with the trainers. Because I was feeling great, but, you know, the coaches, they don't want to risk anything in spring, you know, because yeah. they need you in the fall. So it wouldn't be worth it to, like, try to risk anything just for a few reps in the spring. So they gave me a little bit extra time. Um, and I'm pretty sure as soon as everything is like clear with Corona, I can go full 100% one-on-ones and all that mm -hmm. stuff. But in the spring, I was not, I, I, didn't, I never had a one-on-one -on -one with another guy or anything. I just did like my own routes on the sideline. I had an individual group during the lifts. It's called the Devo group, the development group, okay. uh, where a bunch of freshmen are inside, uh, a part of the group and also the injured guys. So you got like your own strength and conditioning coaches and they know your injuries. So they, um, they create a workout plan based on your injuries and all that. So that's what I basically did during the spring. Yeah. Okay. Um, were you able to watch some of the one-on-ones or, or team periods and, and try to get... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So during the practice, um, you know, you, you're a coach, so you know how a practice usually works. Yeah. So... Uh, like the one-on-ones are usually at the end and also like team and all that stuff, seven on seven. So um, in the beginning of the practice, in the middle of the practice, I kind of did my own stuff. Sometimes I joined the positioning individual uh, phases. And then at the end, I actually had to stand on the sideline to like learn the place mm -hmm. and watch the, the guys who are like doing the signals and all that. So um, I was not taking part on, on the one-on-ones so or on the seven-on-sevens, but I was watching the offense and the defense. So, like yeah. Because like talking about before, where you kind of said out here in Germany, basically all you had to do was basically for the most part blow by certain guys and, and coverages, right? Did yeah. You, did, you get, did you get, let's say, did you notice the athletic ability of the DBs, the defense now being in Arizona? Because it's a different level. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's also like the – um, Talent-wise, they're faster, they're stronger, but also technique-wise, they know much more, you know. Mm -hmm. So in Germany, um, when I run a road, I could, instead of like three steps on a curl, I could use seven steps. I was still faster mm -hmm. than most of the DBs, you know. I could, I could waste time and movement during the road, but you were still faster, but right. you can't do this here, obviously, because one step too much or something like that can already cause a drop, you know. Mm. Um, or unnecessary like contested or tough catch so yeah I, I definitely notice a difference they weigh faster they know much more about the game you you have to kind of adapt to it you can't just use the same moves all like every time you know because they 
they pick it up pretty fast. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, you get stronger here. The coaches help you. They show you all the moves. So at the end, it's the same, you know, because in Germany, I, I knew basically nothing about football, but I was faster. But now here, the, the opponents, they know much more. But at the same time, the coaches are also like mm-hmm. coaching me much more. So I think at the end of the day, it's basically the same, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how was then the first days? Uh, when the people know, oh, there's a German kid, he's, got, he's coming from Germany, that a little bit underestimate you, like uh, he probably just plays soccer or so, or they really know already, hey, they're playing football, American football oh, in Germany. So, oh yeah, obviously, like, you, I had to, like, take in all the jokes, you know, <laughs> about, oh, shit, they play football over there, and <laughs> shit, I thought they only play soccer, and also, like, you know, a little bit stuff about the history and all that stuff yeah. which happened in Germany, you know. But um, so it was never like bad vibes or anything. That I never mm-hmm. tried to like um, like say anything bad or you know always joking and all that. And I don't know like about thinking that I'm pretty bad. To be honest, I think I couldn't prove yet what I can do because of my injury, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that like most of the guys still don't know that I can actually play ball, you know, because yeah. I was always standing on the sideline and just taking in the mental reps and all that. But I'm pretty sure that as soon as I can actually step on the field and um, like do the one-on-ones and all that stuff that I can prove myself. Right. And then they will see that, okay, because right now, I mean, they know I have to be good. Otherwise I wouldn't be in the team, you know, right. but as a football player, you always want to see, your teammates actually playing and then you can really like respect them as a football player and I had no chance to do that yet only with like other stuff like off the field like uh, I don't know taking all the mentor reps and um, doing my best during the meetings and all that so they already realized okay like he he really likes to like take the stuff serious but obviously you also have to do it on the field and like against your own teammates. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'm pretty sure that I will have the option to like do this during the fall. Yeah. Perfect. And then other question. We heard right now also in California that they are planning to be not playing football or making sports. Is there anything out of Arizona already? Because some NFL is coming up with real IDs playing in other states. What is uh, in Arizona the, right now? So, I don't know, like, to be honest, um, obviously sometimes you pick something up, but most of the times it's just rumors and it's annoying me, to be honest. So, I don't really watch all that stuff. I'm just waiting for the clear statement. Okay, it's starting on this day. And um, right now, like, everybody's just, like, telling you stuff, but I don't really trust that. So, um, I'm just waiting for someone to really say, Okay, like it's starting on this day, but I can say that Arizona is taking it a little bit easier compared to other states because I think Arizona was actually the first state which opened up the MLB team, you know, yeah. like baseball. I know yeah. what is it, MLB? Base- MLB, baseball, yeah. Yeah. yeah, baseball. So I think they're like right now, they're the only team in the baseball league uh, which kind of said, okay, like we're opening up everything. Um, now we're waiting for you guys for the other states. Yeah. Um, and also, like, I, th- I feel like we were one of the easier states. We didn't close everything. People were still, like, outside. Masks were not mandatory. So I feel like the people are taking it a little bit easier here. We also don't have that many cases compared to other states. Uh-huh. So I feel like, um, yeah, we could play football here soon, probably. Um, but, yeah, also, ba- like, coming back to your question, I also heard that in Cali they didn't want to play. But I'm pretty sure that they can still have a season without the teams from Cali, you know. So I also heard something about um, just having, like, less games, you know. Um, but still at least, like, playing a little bit of football, you know. So, yeah. yeah. But I really don't know. Everybody's telling you something different. I'm just waiting for, like, the clear statement, you know. Exactly. Yeah. It's, like, it's like what you said. You got to focus on you, focus on the process, and then whenever, whenever they give the green light, you go. Because it's like – I mean, you're probably also hearing it out here, out here in Europe and in the GFL. There's so much, so much talk going on at some point. Like you say, like you just don't even look at it. And, um, yeah, it's like, just too stressful, you know. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to like be ready when they tell you, okay, like we're playing in like a month or something. Right. Uh, I, at least I know, okay, I've been working out. I'm ready. So like, uh, I am ready to go, you know. And that, that's yeah. all you can do at the end of the day. I mean, 
And the, the interesting thing is now when we look at it, um, how does it feel to be, I mean, when we personally met, we were at the PPI All-Star Game back in November 2018. Yeah. And basically backtracking to that point, I mean, you had an interesting process because you're also one of the guys that went through the PPI process, um, the, the tour, for example. I mean, did you, looking, at, looking at it right now, and I know it's corona and all that stuff, of course, like we're just dealing with like it is, but looking at it just in terms of what you're trying to achieve and now thinking where you were a year and a half ago, I mean, is it surreal to be like, you know what, I'm at, I, I, I got to a D1, I got a D1 scholarship, and now I'm sitting here? Of course, just regarding all the other stuff going on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. How so, has that been for you? Because you've had an interesting um, process. Yeah, I know. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, to be honest, obviously in the beginning it was a little bit surreal, like all the things you like dreamt about, like getting your like, own helmet, your own mm -hmm. like cabin in the locker room, all that fancy stuff. Um, but I think those things after one or two weeks, they kind of normal, you know, right. you just want to like grind and just like working out and playing football was, um, the only thing I always wanted to do. So right now it's not surreal. I, I already got into the rhythm mm -hmm. and this is not, I don't mean it like arrogant or something, but I, I kind of always knew that, um, with the help of PPI I would like get somewhere. I obviously I didn't know if it was D1 or like FPS football or something. Mm -hmm. But I always had the like the feeling that I would end up somewhere in the States like playing football. Mm -hmm. So it didn't like hook me out of nowhere that I'm like, oh shit, okay, like oh, shit, I'm playing football, you know. <laughs> so I always knew that if because like people tell you if you like really want it, if you really work out every day and that's what I did, you know. Um, that you kind of achieve your goals. Um, and that's why I, I already knew, okay, I would play somewhere probably in 2020. Um, but yeah, obviously, I don't know, like Arizona is a really great place, you know, it's like FPS and all that stuff, like Power 5, all that fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. So obviously, especially in the beginning, I was like, damn, okay, now I'm really here, you know. Mm -hmm. When you like say bye to your family and then you kind of realize, okay, like now it's like, yeah. it's real stuff, you know, like there's no, back, no way to like go back, you know, right. like you're not seeing your family for six months or now like 12 months, you know, so yeah, especially in the beginning, it was a little bit surreal, yeah. Yeah, because you, you, you had a lot of buzz coming over. I mean, I remember, I remember when you signed, was it Pac-12 or the, the, the Pac-12, that they were they were releasing stuff about you, and they were blowing you up. People on the internet were talking about you, like, who's, who's this German kid coming over and this, this, and that? Oh, yeah, but yeah. I, don't, I don't really, to be honest, obviously it's always nice if, like, people talk about you. But um, I, I, to be honest, I really like it also, like, to just be on a dog, you know. I don't, I don't really like it when too many people talk about me before I even, like, played one snap, you mm -hmm. know. So um, I'm just waiting for the moment where I can actually, like, prove myself, play some good football games, and then people can talk about me. Mm -hmm. But I was not, like, really, like, enjoying it a lot that people were, like, talking about me before I even, like, did anything in Arizona, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so... I'm just waiting for the moment to actually prove myself because obviously in the beginnings all when I came here it was all special and like oh my god a German football player shit like we didn't even know he they played <laughs> football over there but after two or three weeks nobody gives a shit you know yeah. like you German okay you all speak new. kind of weird like mm -hmm. you have a weird accent but like nobody cares you know mm -hmm. like, so it doesn't stay for like six months and people are still like saying shit you German so after two or three weeks, nobody cared anymore. Um, and then you just, uh, yeah. like, it's not no special treatment for you or anything, you know. You just, you're just, like, part of the team. Right. You're a regular player and you, like, do the basic shit, you know. Yeah. yeah. But how was your family when you say, I'm going, I'm going to uh, <laughs> Arizona? Oh, I mean, they're, they're, like, cool as you, like, okay, we knew he will leave or they're... I mean, is this I mean, 9,000 um, 9, miles so, away from home? Yeah, so um, in the beginning, my family didn't really like football because, um, I don't know, they didn't know they didn't know anything about football and they just had, like, the negative impression, mm -hmm. like, the concussions and all that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, just, like, trusting a random person because they didn't know Brandon, you know. Exactly. And, Obviously, like all those camps, all those uh, flights, they cost money. So I don't know, just um, the fact that I spent my own money on, on all that stuff, it was really tough for them to accept that. 
But as soon as they realized that I was like getting scholarships, they also realized, oh, he got to be good. And uh, like a, a college education for free, that's something good. Mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, they 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 also want me to obviously do some school stuff, you know. Um, and they know that it's really important. So, yeah, they started to like trust uh, the process and all that. And the like a negative term was my injury. That's where they well like okay yeah you really tried it but maybe it's like not the right thing maybe yeah. it's a sign you know but then they saw that i really wanted it so they st like they still supported me and then after signing like all the pressure was gone you know they could really like they knew okay it's like working we didn't like waste all of our money like mm -hmm. our our son will be happy in the future you know mm -hmm. and and then it was easier for them you know uh, to kind of um yeah let, let me go you know but we are a big family uh, like we really we love our family so it's always tough for a person to like say goodbye you know but they know that i'm happy here so they're also happy for me that's i think that's how they do it just like knowing that i'm happy yeah how big is the list of signing jerseys you have to send home already oh <laughs> i mean i don't even know if i can like i don't even know if they can do it because it it's it's not NFL, you know. People think that we like rich or something. We just college football players. Obviously, like if you play like Alabama or Clemson, they got a little bit more money. But um, I don't think that I can just like send jerseys or something right. Right, to my to my home. But obviously, yeah. like they they give you like all the nice gear and all that stuff. And I'm also like sending some stuff to my best friends and family members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, some presents, birthday presents, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, like many people came, like pay, people I didn't even know the names, they came out of nowhere, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta, man, I need those gloves and shit. And I was like, yeah. obviously you don't say anything negative, but you're like, no, man, not happening. Like, <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. You're like, I don't, I don't know you. Like, who are you? You know? Um, yeah, it's, it's weird, you know, people... Are, I don't know, like many people came out of nowhere. And I don't, I don't even know, want to know how it is if you like, commit to like i don't know like the big time colleges right. you know i'm pretty sure that also like bad people come into your life and try to like use you you know so that's what i was a little bit afraid of just like realizing that a bunch of people came um and i don't know tried to talk to me out of nowhere i really don't like that i try to like have my small circle just try right. to like talk to the same people right. every day and I don't, I don't really i don't really need like all the attention from weird people yeah yeah well i guess it's what the with the big people in sports all over the world say the hard thing is to stay focused because yeah. there is from everywhere people coming left and right yeah. so this is what the what separates the good from the great because they focus on, on on what you're doing what you can do best yeah Sounds, sounds great as you always have this uh, this mindset. Yeah, so it's really easy, especially, uh, it's really easy to get distracted, especially on the college, um, because obviously, you know, they're all the pretty girls. Arizona's a hot state. They don't have that much, up at some you know. point. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It, it's easy we, to get distracted. People see what you're posting. People see what you're huh? posting on your stories. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go, going on these, <laughs> going on these dates with these girls and stuff. You know, I don't know what you got going on, but I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, nah, but I'm, <laughs> I really can say like I'm, I'm chilling. I'm not like doing too many crazy things, you know. Um, but yeah, it's really easy like to get distracted because there are a bunch of people. You know, if you're like a football player, it's not like in Germany. Nobody in Germany, nobody cares if you play football, but. <laughs> If, if they find out that you're a football player, you don't even have to like be active like playing or something. Just the fact that you're a football player right. is already enough that they try to like spend time with you and like, and, you know, do the dumb stuff. Yeah. And obviously still sometimes lying. you... Still lying. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but funny. sometimes, obviously you have, you have to also have fun kind of with your yeah. life a little bit, you know. You can't just be in your home and like working out right. the whole day and okay. not talk to anyone. That's also unhealthy. But um, obviously, there are some things you shouldn't do. Regular students can do because they don't have drug tests. Or right. if they have a problem with the girl, the police doesn't care sometimes. But if you have a problem, it comes up and it's everywhere, headlines yeah. and all that, because you're the one player. So you really have to be smart. But the coaches keep telling you, and, and there are a bunch of people who can help you if you got problems with someone. So 
if you really don't want to get in trouble, you don't get in trouble. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, this, they probably, coaches already probably told you they give you the whole orientation deal when you get new, new players coming yeah. in. They, yeah. They, they yeah. keep you under, under, under a special microscope. You know, everybody's watching. Everybody watching your every move. But like you said, at the end of the day, like, you also got to enjoy the experience because before you know it, you know, it's four years later and you're done. You know, so you still want to have a, a good balance of saying, you know what? Yeah. I committed myself. I yeah. put in the time and effort. I busted my butt as a student athlete because also education, like you said, is number one. We also you yeah. really had some fun. You enjoyed it. You know, you got to experience it. That's the big thing. You know. Yeah, and I also believe that it's beneficial for football if you also like um, got kind of relaxed a little bit outside of football. You know, you can't like be thinking the whole day about football and like stressing yeah. yourself the whole time. Right. That's also like not good for your performance, you know. Yeah. Yeah. How how often are you still talking to Brandon and also like let's let's I mean hundred percent your mom's calling you back home every other day, right? Oh yeah, I'm almost like talking to my family every day. But obviously it's like nine hours of difference. It's not that easy. Um so at least like every second day. Um but yeah, I'm trying to like talk to them daily on a daily basis, even if it's just like five minutes. Seeing your mom, your dad, your my sister for like five minutes can also right. like already change my day, you know. Right. So yeah, and to Brandon, um, I mean he's a busy man, obviously, but he uh, he hits me up three, uh, multiple times. Yeah. Um. Also, always like uh, tries to like check how how am I doing and all that. So mm -hmm. I especially during the Corona time now, I talk to him. Um. And he like I'm chatting with him on Instagram and all that. He. He's always like asking if I'm like doing okay and all that. Um, and also that's a good thing about like PPI. Obviously like you don't talk to everyone, but you always have like one or two guys you can still like talk to um, because especially the PPI tour, like just like grinding with your, with your guys like every day, you really get like close friendships from that. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really have like four or five guys. I'm also like talking at least twice or something a week. Okay. with them and so yeah i got some people like who i like can talk to yeah you are what, what guys are you still talk are you talking to any guys that are still or let's say that are in the states already at their schools the so um i um i've just talked to gyro it's his birthday today that's right um i i, I talked to him last week for like an hour or something um i talked to maurice a lot you know maurice yeah yeah so i talked to maurice a lot um, I, I talked to Marco. You know Marco? Which one's that one? Um, he's he he committed to like New Mexico. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, he's from the uh, Netherlands. Um, and I also talked to Liridon. Uh -huh. You know Liridon? He committed to Temple. Yeah. And then yeah. yeah, so yeah, those are like my best friends, I guess, from because they're also like my roommates. So. I don't know. It was a crazy experience. So yeah, yeah they're really good friends now. You know, cool. yeah, we're sharing the same, the same problems right now, exactly. or the same challenges. I mean, the visa stuff and all. It's you know, it's, you know for it's, them it's even worse because they're like outside of the states. So, yeah. um, like uh, Liridon and uh, Marco, they they can't get into the country now. That's also like the reason why I didn't leave because nobody could tell me how many months i had to wait to like um to like come back you know yeah. so um it could it could have happened that i would, would have had to like wait for five six months you know yeah because um i don't have the american citizenship so right. it's not that easy to like get back right. and uh, they they don't they're not in a country right now so they really have to wait to to like start with the college experience and yeah that sucks so yeah, that's maybe like the good thing about still like being here, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. No, because I mean, because was it Gy Gyro's already at West Virginia, right? Yeah, yeah, Gyro's already here. Yeah. So, so he's he probably came going, in January. He's probably going through the same thing you're going through, also. Yeah, way. yeah. But Gyro, he he got some teammates who are still there, you know. Okay. So yeah, he he got a, he got a he still got like six or seven guys he working out with. Um, so yeah, he really blessed. He 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 got lucky. But unfortunately, I don't have any teammates here. Um, but yeah, I, I got a homie. He play, he helping me a little bit. You know, yeah. You got to teach him. Just like you said, you got to teach him how to throw a football, and then at least yeah, that's tough, man. <laughs> Just today, man. 
Damn, like it's it's really hard. I Man, I think I'm really I'm a little bit too hard on them because <laughs> yeah. it also took me, yeah, um, it also took me a long time to like learn how to throw, and I still suck at throwing, you know. Yeah. But you know, you you and your mode, you would just run around an easy route, and man, the ball is like flying five meters to the wrong direction or something. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it gets frustrating, you know. Or oh, yeah, but it is what it is. It's better than nothing, you know. Exactly. You're really trying to help me and. We also do like tennis ball stuff. It's easier to throw a tennis ball, so um, it's yeah. He really helping me, so yeah, I'm really thankful. You know, I yeah, that. It, and it gives you something to do. I mean, you coach him up. It keeps you guys busy at the end of the day. You know, yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. I, I got a question about the process that you had because the interesting thing with you um, is you are you already had interest from teams right when then you tore your acl or how was that because then ultimately like like arizona still offered you while you were hurt right so yeah that was kind of weird so um i had some interest in other colleges um and also um i think that i would have had like some other offers if i didn't uh, if i didn't like tore my acl uh -huh. because i was talking to other colleges also like good colleges but obviously, like, tearing your ACL is always kind of like a, yeah, it kills your office, you know, sometimes. <laughs> if, you're, if you're, like, not a five-star recruit, and even if you're a five-star recruit, it can really, like, definitely yeah. make your life harder. So I didn't get offered by those colleges, uh, uh, which I was talking to. And, and obviously, mentioning that you uh, tore your ACL is also, like, bad for the colleges which already offered you. Mm -hmm. But I don't know why I still had some interest in three or four colleges out of my, I think I had nine offers or something. Uh -huh. So like three or four colleges were still like really like interested in me, even though I was injured. And then out of nowhere, Arizona just like hit me up. I didn't even go to a camp because okay. we were on the East Coast, you know. Mm -hmm. So there was this, it's weird, man. There was this like European coach from Great Britain. Okay. Uh, and he saw me somewhere on the camp and he is like in contact with Arizona or something. So they, he sent them a highlight tape and that's how they found me. So yeah, really weird. And obviously you get all excited, like, oh damn, Arizona, but they obviously didn't know about my injury. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was weird. So I, I talked to them, but I was afraid of like mentioning my injury. So I only mentioned it when I already knew which would be my date for the surgery. Okay. So, so that I could actually like provide something, some information because just like saying, okay, I got injured. I don't know when they like having a surgery on me. So that's kind of bad. You know, they always want to know at least, um, when your surgery is, if you got a great doctor and all that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they offered me on the phone. And then on the second time I was like, yeah, obviously I have something negative to mention. Yeah. I told my ACL. And obviously you think oh, they saying, oh, shit, that sucks. And then, like, they hang up and right. they never talk to you, you know. That's what I was expecting. Um, but I don't know. They were, they were still interested. They were like, yeah, we're getting through that. We're going through that. Uh, you will get there. And uh, we're not worried about the injury. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that you still, like, work out and all that. And you, we know that they got good doctors in Germany, so you will be fine. Okay. And, yeah, I had my surgery. Um, Obviously, on my official visit, they still had to, like, check money so they uh, with their own doctors. Okay. So I could not commit before they checked me, obviously. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, they invited me. They paid for everything. They invited me to the official visit with my family and all that. I went there. I had a bunch of, obviously, a bunch of medical checks, like x-rays and all that stuff on the knee. MRI. Um, yeah, but I was good. The surgery was successful. I had a great doctor. I had all the papers all the documents to prove that my knee was actually doing good and they were like oh yeah he he like really good because i think i went to my official visit i don't know like two or three months after my surgery right. and they were expecting me like still um like not even being able to walk you know uh -huh. so um i could do everything i will actually after like one and a half weeks i was already almost like able to jog again you know uh -huh. So they were really surprised by how good my knee was. And then they gave me like the green lights and I could commit. Yeah. So that's how it happened. 
I, th I thought I was wondering because I was worried. I mean, because, you know, I was sending you workouts to do and stuff. And I remember I was yeah. telling you, I'm like, be careful. Don't push it. This and that. Because, you know, you're up yeah. in Berlin and I was in France sending you workouts. And I was, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was worried because I wasn't hands on, you know. And yeah, like, yeah. 100% Birdo's out here pushing it to the limit. You know, no, but you know. obviously, obviously, if you like, if you know shit, I got in with it in like six weeks, I got to be in shape as yeah. good as I can. Obviously, you try to like push it, but I, I was not doing any, anything dumb or like stupid. Right. And the workout plan was already also like really good. So there were no, no, uh, no exercises or like nothing where it was like really risky, yeah. risky for my knee, yeah. you know. So I was not like doing anything uh where i could really like hurt my knee right. um so yeah there was like no reason to like be worried about anything yeah 100 yeah. percent. but that, i mean that, that, that's a very interesting look at the whole process that you had because like you said i mean you get hurt and not only a lot of these schools won't offer you or they'll drop their offers but i mean you also see this in the nfl draft you know guys yeah. get hurt and their draft stock falls a lot a lot especially yeah. at that level now you know so it's it's, it's a big thing, I would say, from especially U of A to say, you know what, we, we want to keep this guy. We want to help him, you know, especially for yeah. the rehab process. Because like you said, yeah. like, they check you out and so forth. And this was also, like, the main reason for me why I committed to Arizona. Because, as I said, I also had some other offers. Yeah. And I probably, like, also, like, really good conferences outside mm -hmm. of the Pac-12. But I had the feeling that Arizona was a team which – wanted me the most even though I was injured and it's just like a good sign that they're really like interested in you and they really trust you and like they trust in your skills and all that and yeah that's that's why I committed to Arizona because they didn't they didn't really care about my injury they just wanted to have me as a player and they they believed in me so it was actually an easy easy decision to make for me yeah that's big that's great um jump a little bit ahead maybe Let's say you are four years, three years starter at Arizona. How many times yeah. are you dreaming from with the in the twenty four <laughs> NFL draft, the San Francisco, whatever, Detroit yeah. Lions select? I mean, how many times? You, I mean, you are. I mean, honest. Be a starter on this college, on this name. Everything is possible. You you realize this also sometimes it can happen. I mean, obviously you think about it. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I want to play in the NFL. I feel yeah. like every football player wants to play in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. But I also know that, you know, I don't want to like talk negative about anyone. But I know that a bunch of people say that they want to play in the NFL. But at the end of the day, they not like behaving this way, you know. So. Yeah. I don't know, like they want, they, they say like in the locker room, yeah, I want to play in the NFL, but then they don't use a cold tub after the workout, right. you know, like things nobody would do. Like if you really want to play in the NFL, like you don't drink before practice, or you don't like eat like shit the whole week, you know, okay. you don't do all that stuff. So there are a few guys that they say they want to play in the NFL, like basically every day they say that, but they don't behave this way. So. Um, I'm really like I don't really like to like say it every like multiple times that I want to play in the NFL because I feel like there's so much I have to do before I can actually think about it. Right. Um, so I, at first I really want to like get that school that college thing get, like get going. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, I'm planning on staying here at least three years, three four years. So there's so much to do before I can actually think like serious about NFL. Um, but obviously, yeah, you dream about it. You think about it. You want to like, it's like, it's a dream to like buy a house for your family, like, um, have a nice house at home, like provide something good for your family. Yeah. I really want to do that. And also like play on the highest level in a big stadium. That's a dream, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I really want to do that college thing at first. And I think it's already like hard enough to play on the D1 level and like, uh, be focused and like not get injured and like do everything right so I feel like it's better to just like focus on college at first yeah right I mean because because like as long as you're doing the little things like you said take care of your body using the cold tub eating right I mean ultimately yeah. if you focus on those things and making sure you're doing them throughout your college career 
that's ultimately helping you stay ready for the pros because like you said a lot of guys don't do it and they're talking about they want to go to NFL and then what happens and you see this all the time especially when guys are preparing for combines the season ends yeah. and now that's when they start taking it serious for what two three months yeah that's you've really been taking it seriously since day one and at least have your body ready to go you know yeah, yeah. and that's also a thing because Obviously, like, college is hard, like, all the mandatory lifts and all that. Um, but at the end of the day, you can always, like, cheat a little bit. You can always do less. Like, there are not everywhere cameras. Like, people are checking you. But mm -hmm. if you really don't want to give 100%, like, you can like, kind of cheat through it and just, like, like be on the team but, like, not give 100% every day. Um, but that's what kills you at the end. And um, I think if I just, like, give my best every day uh, – that's like what I can do right now you know I can't do much more like it's uh it would be unnecessary to like already think and plan everything about the NFL right. you know, I didn't even play one snap on college level exactly you know? so yeah but yeah obviously I really I really believe in myself and I think that like with my mentality and I with my talent I got that I could play in the NFL one day mm -hmm. um if I like stay healthy and I if I stay focused um, I really think that I could do it one day, yeah. But obviously, you never know. I'm just like giving my best, and then I will see how it goes, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I mean, this is how how the people talk who made it, you know. This is always the guys yeah. who made it who say, I, I keep focused on the next step, and that's that's uh, yeah. that's great, yeah. Of course, and yeah. It's like the obviously, they are. Oh, sorry, yeah, no, no, go on, you're fine, yeah. Obviously, I mean, like, I ain't gonna lie, there are also like some guys in the NFL who like didn't care about all their stuff but right. they're like super talented um, yes. and like you like no, no not everyone looks like wrong you know like yeah. not everyone yeah. is like that talented you know so um, I feel like there's this one percent which is uh, who, like those guys they're really talented so they they don't really have to do that stuff but even if you make it to the NFL and you really don't care about like taking that shit serious you could end up like only playing for three seasons instead of like a hall of fame career like yeah. 10 15 years or something so even if you're like really talented it's always like obviously better to like care about the, the details and all that small stuff you know yeah absolutely so yeah no, i mean that, that's the thing and i always tell a lot of guys especially and i believe i told you too and i remember talking also to alex Hudig about this as well but it's like when you got, it doesn't matter if you're making the high school jump or the college jump or even the pro jump, like David Bada and like Chris Azala made and so forth. It's like you guys cannot stay content. You can't think I made it. Like yes, yeah. like, like yes, you you have like check marks and yeah, you hit that one check mark. But now what are the next ones? Because the big thing is, is for a lot of guys, and I'm not gonna lie, for a lot of Europeans to get content and say, oh, I, I got the offer, or I got signed, and then now what? And now kind of for them, it's like okay, I've reached the top. Well, it's like you said, oh, like no. if, if you if you truly want to be great at your craft and make truly a career out of it, like you said, at some point you get some sort of financial return, which everybody for the most part wants to make when they play football, you know, you got to grind. Like you cannot be content no matter even if you – yesterday you had a good training or a good practice. You got to think, hey, next yeah. practice I got to be better. Because ultimately this is the thing, right? Coaches are looking to you to do what? Step up your game every day. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's the kind of business that it is. Yeah. yeah. I, feel, I feel like especially – especially as a European player, I feel like I have so much responsibility. So if I mess up, it could be bad for like the whole PPI thing, you know, yeah. for like Germany, for Europe. Like if, if a bunch of PPI guys mess up now, all the coaches that could be like, okay, that was like a short project. We could try to recruit European guys, mm -hmm. but nah, they ain't shit. Like it's not worth it, you know? Yeah. So I feel like especially as a European guy, you can't like – be lazy and just uh, like don't care because by you like playing good you help other guys um and you make their lives easier you know because i know a bunch of people who could play d1 i know really talented guys i know guys who are bigger than americans yeah. but nobody's seeing them nobody knows about them so that's kind of sad you know so if uh, so if i mess up now i'm making it even harder for them that's what i think i feel like I think about them maybe like almost every day, you know, so I really, I, I can't mess it up now. I have like too much, too much pressure on my back, you know, too many people who really rely on me, like my parents who try to help me, uh, my coaches who help me getting here, you know, so I, I can't mess up, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I would, I would, I would recommend something to you. I would say don't, don't think about it as pressure. 
Yeah, no, no, okay, yeah, well, it's not like a negative mean, pressure, it's like a positive, it's positive, a positive thing, yeah. You said, like, they're, like, the, the name European football is on your back when you go out there. Yeah, yeah, but that's all, that also helps me, you know, because I know, like, I got, like, I got a bunch of players, like, on, on, like in my back, you know, so um, I really feel that it also, like, strengthens me, it makes me, like, tougher, it makes me stronger, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's nothing negative, not at all, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying because a lot of people, when they hear pressure, they think negative. Like for you at the end of the day, it's, it's a why. That's, that's your why, you know, in the middle. Yeah. yeah. No, pressure is always good because like without pressure, I ain't going to lie, when you come to college, there will always be pressure. Like if you drop a ball, the coach won't be like, oh, no, nah, that's good. You got the next one. Like there's always pressure. Like he will probably like he will be he will say something <laughs> bad like it's nothing personal but there will always be pressure you know regardless of what you're doing now or you know so pressure can really be something good as long as like not too much pressure you know so i feel like i always needed some pressure to achieve like the highest performance and yeah that's why i think it really helps me you know right. yeah 100 percent. i mean you got you got to be pushed at the end of the day you know, that, I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of guys realize. And even Demi said this when he played at Florida and then went to URI. It's like you notice, like you said, the pressure, but also like the expectations. Like, because, for example, over here in Europe, it's easy for a guy like that to slack off and just do the minimum. I mean, they're like, you can't slack off and think you're going to start. It's not going to work like that. You know, no. say, like coach is going to say something. Most likely he's going to say some mean things. You know, and try to try to light a fire. And if it doesn't work, the next guy is jumping in. And that's what a lot of yeah. guys don't understand. Like the, the 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 depth chart is so big to where you know what the next day you may not even be in the first group. Plain and simple. Yeah, and that's also like you know like obviously all the coaches got excited that I got here and all that. But the thing is, I think also a lot of guys forget that uh, why they're recruiting you. They're also like looking for the guy who's like replacing you. So. I, I came in here 2020, but they're already like looking for someone for like 2021, you know. So you don't even have to like worry about the guys who are like right now in your roster because you know like next fall, next spring, there's another guy coming in in your position, you know. So yeah. there's like no, there's never like a time to kind of relax and just yeah. like uh, rely on what you did the last weeks, you know, and yeah. Now that, that that's always the biggest the biggest thing that a lot of guys have to get used to playing in the states because the, the the only way to know how that is to like understand like literally somebody is breathing you know like 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 behind your back literally like because they're they're chasing your heels you know so to say in the race is is for you to be to play ball in the states then you know really what it's like you know yeah because it's, it's yeah it's a completely different world and a lot of people if you haven't played in the states you don't know what it's like no you know? no. Yeah, that's another thing. A lot of guys, they, that's why, because obviously when, let's say, uh, like a young player hits me up, he's like 14 years old on Instagram, and he asks me like a bunch of questions. How should I do that? How should I do that? Obviously, like, I'm always trying to help them. I'm always like giving them some advice. But I know that like most of those guys, they want to, they say they want to play like college football, but they only see like the positive things, you know, um, like, I don't know, playing in front of a big crowd, uh, catching the game-winning touchdown, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, like the parties and the fancy helmets and all that stuff. Right. Um, but then when you like tell them, yeah, wake up every day, like 6.30, 7 a.m., they're like, oh my God, no, nah, I can't do that, you know? <laughs> or like, you got to cook every day, you got to cook your own food, like you can't be eating outside unhealthy food. They're like, nah, I don't have time for that, you know? Although you got to stretch every day before you go to bed or like those details, you know, the things we mentioned before, right. they're like, nah, man, I don't have time for that. I want to like play video games before I go to bed, you know? So yeah. um, I know that like by help, while, while I'm helping people, I know that like most of those guys, they, don't really, they actually don't know how it really is. And they, nobody sees it, you know, like nobody sees that. They only see like the cool stuff on Instagram and all that, but yeah. they don't see when you're like throwing up in the corner because nobody recalls that stuff you know right. yeah so i feel like there are some guys who really want to play college football but there are also a bunch of guys who only want like the nice things you know yeah no i mean you're, you're right about that i mean that's it's uh like you're, you're like you're going through right now you're getting to experience it and what i'm noticing is you actually you like 
I'm glad to see how this first, let's say, first semester spring has affected you and how you're, you're keeping a level head and you're focused on what you need to do, you know, which is good to see. And I like seeing that, especially during this time where there's even more adversity going on and for the most part in every, in every oh, yeah. lives with the corona situation. So that's good to see because, you know, you're away from home. You have all these other external factors. You know, there's stressors at the end of the day, just being away. And it's good to see that you're, you're, you're staying level headed and you're staying on track, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, like, nobody's perfect. I also, like, messed up stuff. Uh, I didn't, like, uh, I didn't do everything, like, perfectly, you know, nobody's perfect. But, but I feel like if, you, if you're trying your best and if you're, like, staying consistent and trying to do your stuff every day, um, um, yes, yeah, like, that's all you got to do. If you, like, really focus on that and you try to do it every day. Um, you can sometimes you sometimes you can have a cheat meal you know like yeah. you don't have to like like work like a machine or something like nobody's perfect you know even in the NFL sometimes they have a cheat meal or sometimes they go out they have a little fun you know so that's also important yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely, man. I mean anyhow we're, we're gonna let you go because you probably got to finish your your food since you said you were, you were trying to finish your food yeah but oh yeah yeah you obviously forgot about it, but, but we appreciate having you. And it was good talking. No, nah, no, nah, it's it's nothing in the kitchen. It's just like no, nah, nothing yeah. is burning or something. Yeah, you good. But anyhow, we'll, we'll we'll let you we'll let you get back to your day and then do what you got to do. And then appreciate having you on. And we'll I appreciate forward. having me, man. Thank you. Thank no you. Worries. And then we're looking forward to the season getting underway, or at least practices slowly. And then we'll, we'll keep talking. Okay. All right. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. All Stay right, safe and have a Thank you, guys. All right. Stay safe. God bless. Yeah. God bless. Right. Bye. Bye.